welcome to Select Chicago on March 10th. This is our second set of sessions for today. We're uh, recording live in the village of Park Forest, Illinois, and it is a town roughly uh, 20 miles south of downtown Chicago, and it's part of the Wilcook Enterprise Zone. Wilcook Enterprise Zone comprises seven, just under 75,000 people, five municipalities, including Governor State University. It's a logistics nexus for the south suburbs of Illinois. And we are now moving into learning about Scotland. Uh, this has been high on my list of something that we've been wanting to do. Uh, Scotland is well represented in the Midwest, but now we get to hear about why folks from the Midwest want to inbound invest in Scotland. And with me, I have Alan Hogarth from uh, uh, Scottish Chamber. Scottish Chamber, so why don't you correct me on that, Alan, and uh, take it away. Hi. Uh Michael, nice, nice to meet you again. Uh, I'm from the Scottish North American Business Council. Delighted to have the opportunity to speak to you and the people of the Midwest. Scotland has really strong ties to America. Um, John Knox Witherspoon um, was signatory to the July the 4th Declaration of Independence. He was the only active clergyman and only college president to sign that declaration. He hailed from the east of Scotland. And there are, there are other really strong ties that link Scotland and Chicago. For example, the first uh, skyscraper built in Chicago, the Home Insurance Building, which was built in 1885, located on the corner of Adams and LaSalle Street in Chicago, um, was built with Andrew Carnegie Steel. Andrew Carnegie left on Fairland, made his fortune in steel in the US and became a leading philanthropist. In fact, during his last 18 years of his life, he gave away $350 million dollars equivalent in today's money to 5.3 billion. Um, there are other strong ties between Glasgow and Chicago, my home city. In the year of 1871, there was a great fire in Chicago and the Glasgow Lord Provost, which is equivalent to your mayor, sent a donation to help rebuild the city of Chicago. And the other um, connections that you can see are evident in the Chicago area with regional areas such as Inverness, which are this, the host chamber that's taking part in the virtual trade mission to Chicago. We also have West D, Bannockburn, the place of a historic battle between Scotland and our now friendly neighbour within the UK, England, and Midlothian. But anyway, enough of the historical links that build ties that allow us to trade between Scotland and the US, because the US is our big, single biggest export market. But this afternoon, we can explore why Scotland should be a place that you should consider investing in and setting up your business in, and who best place to, to tell us why that should be and Jim Keeley. Jim is Vice President of Scottish Development International. His day job is responsible for software, digital technology and low carbon energy. We're obviously really keen um, to welcome Americans to Glasgow later this year. And uh, in November, we'll be hosting COP26, the big climate conference where President Biden, Biden and his climate change ambassador Kerry will be there. So we look forward to welcoming him and many Americans. Over to you, Jim, to take us uh, forward at, on today's session. Thanks so much, Jim. Thank you, Alan. I, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to uh, speak about Scotland as the land of low carbon opportunity. Uh, my name is Jim Keeley, and I represent Scottish Development International, the economic development arm of the Scottish government, and I am based in Chicago. Um, the first, uh, this particular session, Scotland is known for a number of different industries, but this particular session, I'm going to focus on uh, our renewable sector. So um, I'm, you know, I'm glad to be able to talk to you about Scotland's renew low carbon ambitions and why Scotland has become such an influential player in this space. The Scottish government was early mover when it came to renewable energy, and we're continuing to set really ambitious targets in both the short term and the long term. In 2019, Scotland produced over 90% of its electricity with renewable sources, and we're confident that in 2020, the numbers, when they are published, Scotland will have moved that number to 100%, which is a big deal. Uh, that's the short term. In the medium term, 
Scotland is aiming to meet 50% of our total energy demand with renewables by 2030 and will phase out the sale of diesel and gasoline-fueled cars by 2032. In the long term, we've set the target date for a net zero emissions of all greenhouse gases by the year 2045. So it is our hope that Scotland's contribution to climate change will end effectively within one generation. Right now, onshore wind supplies most of the clean energy that Scotland produces, but increasingly we're seeing sources from marine energy and offshore wind taking more and more of that, uh, you know, producing more and more clean energy. Scotland is home to the world's first floating offshore wind farm, and incredibly, 25% of Europe's entire offshore wind resource crosses the seas around Scotland. So hopefully that demonstrates not only the ambition that Scotland has to combat climate change, but also the natural resources that are making these ambitions possible. As far as energy storage and low carbon transport, which is uh, you know what I'm going to focus on in this uh, session, um, it, I wanted to highlight how quickly we're prioritizing you know areas of energy storage and low carbon transport. And don't worry, I won't go through all the details on this particular slide, but I would just point out that the development of hydrogen related projects is a growing priority in Scotland and that the Scottish government is dedicated to developing a supply chain for battery storage and scaling up the production of batteries in Scotland. As Alan mentioned, uh, COP26 uh, is scheduled for Glasgow uh, the first two weeks of November of this year. Um, it's a really important event and uh, we're really promoting you know, the COP26 event in Glasgow to, you know, our prospects as well as our existing inward investors. COP26 is the UN's 26th climate change conference, and it will be held in Glasgow in November. And we're really excited to work alongside the UK government to help host this event. We want to take advantage of this opportunity to highlight not only what Scotland is doing as a country to enact, you know, uh, 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 clean energy solutions, but we also want to highlight what Scottish companies and what foreign based companies are also doing to build that net zero future in Scotland. It will be a global platform to promote the progress that companies are making. And I'm optimistic that by November, it will be safe for people to travel to Glasgow to take part in the event. So if you weren't aware of Scotland's role in this area, I hope this has been helpful. But the truth is that we need help to reach these goals. And so we're inviting companies that are in growth mode and contributing to some of these low carbon solutions to come to Scotland and help us solve these issues. Despite its modest size, Scotland is very well connected to the rest of the world. It boasts a fantastic quality of life. And for those of you who have had a chance to visit Scotland, I think you will agree that it's a beautiful place to live and to visit. Scotland's welcoming business environment offers opportunities across many sectors, including you know, low carbon and renewables, areas such as FinTech, life sciences and healthcare, and software. So again, this particular session is focused on low carbon and renewables, but certainly there are opportunities in other sectors that we welcome the chance to speak with companies about. 
So at Scottish Development International, our focus is to help companies to who are looking to open an operation in Scotland, the UK, or wider Europe. So our organization can help with connections to universities and industry. We can identify potential financial incentives that companies can tap into. We can help companies to access the talent base in Scotland. We can also help with you know, helping companies to identify properties for locating in Scotland. So my colleagues and I, both here in the US and in Scotland, are more than happy to point companies in the right direction to help them grow their business in Scotland. I wanted to take this uh, opportunity to highlight the Michelin Scotland Innovation Park in Dundee. The MSIP, uh, an abbreviation, is Scotland's newest innovation park with its focus on sustainable transport and low carbon energy. The MSIP in Dundee consists of 990,000 square feet of factory space over an 80 acre site, and it includes 37 acres of undeveloped land. So this particular site uh, offers an opportunity for the next generation of innovators in sustainable transport and low carbon energy to set up quickly and grow in Scotland, the UK, and wider Europe. The mission of the Michelin Scotland Innovation Park is to build a dynamic and creative home for innovators, manufacturers, and skill leaders to collaborate and nurture growth and advances in sustainable mobility and decarbonization. So this is the MSIP, uh, the Michelin Scotland Innovation Park. The Michelin Scotland Innovation Park was formerly a Michelin tire production facility and uh, the Michelin handed this particular facility over to uh, Scottish Enterprise and the Dundee City Council and uh, with the help to develop this particular site into a world-class uh, innovation park. So the MSIP is fully operational and ready to welcome tenants, researchers, and educators. The facilities at the MSIP include production space, warehousing, offices, a training center, accelerator labs, an innovation hub, and incubator space. So it has all of the amenities that growing companies are going to require as they uh, develop new technologies or new solutions to address climate change. So this particular slide references the green and sustainable energy that the MSIP currently uh, deploys. So. Uh, you know, true to its objective of helping lead the way to a sustainable future for Scotland, the MSIP generates most of its energy from sustainable sources such as wind, energy from waste, and solar. So companies that locate in the MSIP will truly be uh, taking on the uh, combating climate change uh, at the MSIP because, again, most of its energy is generated by um, renewable or sustainable sources. So uh, thank you for your time today. I welcome any questions during the Q&A session. Thanks, John. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. It's um, Alistair Gunn here um, and really appreciate 
um, the, the time for being invited to today's session. As I say, I'm Alistair Gunn, I'm the kind of head of business for the Glasgow City Innovation District. And today um, I'm going to kind of you know, take everyone you know, you know, through what's happening within the technology sector in Scotland. And then kind of you know, looking at all the kind of latest kind of developments, but also then kind of provide a bit more focus on um, innovation districts and especially those within kind of Glasgow. So, as I say, you know, for, for many of you, you, know, you may know that um, you know, Scotland has got a, a rich kind of history on you know, kind of innovation and technology development. And it's one of the things which um, you know, over the, 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 kind of, you know, the last you know, 10 or you know, even 20 years, um, there's been obviously a, a strong um, development within that sector. Um, but also something, again, that um, the, the, the country is very much open and inclusive for, you know, for, for that kind of development. One of the things which um, you know, Scotland is you know, kind of famous for is that innovation. And this kind of, um, you know, kind of slide you know, just shows some of the um, activity that's taking place in and around Scotland. And I'm really kind of going to, going to go through just some of that kind of, um, kind of activity. So, I mean, these are all developments that are actually taking place across Scotland, you know, from Aberdeen, where we've got what's called a, an innovation centre called Seedbod, which is focusing in on food and drink innovation, you know, through to um, the, the expansion of the BioQuarter over in Edinburgh, which is kind of associated with um, Edinburgh University. There's a new national robotarium being created, again, just on the outskirts of Edinburgh, and that's going to be developed, you know, kind of focusing in, in the kind of robots and also kind of like, linking to that, the kind of conversational kind of AI. One of the other areas that's happening is there's a lot of development that's going on across a lot of the universities and um, the Futures Institute is also another kind of development that's taking place. Now the Futures Institute is actually the old hospital in Edinburgh, which was um, right beside Edinburgh University. And that's being developed, you know, as I say, you know, for areas focusing in on artificial intelligence and how you apply that artificial intelligence into kind of various kind of markets. Within Glasgow, um, we've also got, you know, one of the things that um, Glasgow has had a very, very strong history on is actually within engineering. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> and within that engineering, no, no. Many of you may remember, know that um, Glasgow was one of the, the you know, the, the world's you no know, largest kind of shipbuilding um, shipbuilders, um, and producing quite a lot of the main kind of ships, um, you know, that sailed to kind of the world. Nowadays, that expertise is now being channeled into the kind of manufacturing, and this is where you no, know, we've got the advanced manufacturing in, um, innovation district being set up over beside Glasgow Airport and also um, you know, the, 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 the National Manufacturing Institute, which is again is looking into you no know, advances into kind of forming and um, kind of manufacturing related to that. So one of the things which um, you know, has been um, has been focused, um, one of the things that's happening is you no know, Scotland is is very much ramping up its focus on technology development. And this kind of um, kind of slide just provides you a bit of the insight into what's kind of happening across there, both across policy level um, as well as um, innovation centres. So I just kind of want to kind of go through some of these kind of particular kind of areas and talk a bit more further. further. So um, in the next couple of months, um, you know, Scotland's going to be bringing out its own AI um, strategy, which is a policy document which is going to support um, Organizes organizations and business when they start developing um, and implementing AI you know, solutions into various kind of marketplaces. And that's going to begin in giving guidance um, for companies who are looking to innovate on how to then adopt and also deploy that. We've also got um, programs like CIFTEC, which CIFTEC was set up by the Scottish Government to support the Know, digital transformation of public services. And this is um, as it been run centrally within central government, but also applies across um, local government. So all focused on that kind of transition and um, towards you know, the kind of digital adoption. 
One of the other uh, areas that we're, we've got um, established is also the Scotland 5G Centre. And the Scotland 5G Centre is um, focusing on, it's a national kind of um, you know, innovation hub, which is looking at the advancement and implementation of 5G solutions. One of the area that um, um, Scotland has obviously got, it's got a very rural community. And over the last couple of years, you know, the, um, Scotland has been championing on what's called rural 5G. It's taking that 5G connectivity to, um, to communities which are probably less connected. Last year, um, the um, Sky Scanners um, Chief Operating Officer, who recently kind of left, um, was asked by the Scottish Government to, to look at um, the strategy and, and review Scotland's um, tech sector. Um, so this last year, in um, the middle of last year, late towards last year, um, that review was published, which has been highly acclaimed both you know, locally and al also internationally um, with regards to how you develop um, tech ecosystems and how you then bring and support the growth of both talent and also related um, to, to that is also kind of technology and also startups. So it's very, very, um, you know, it's very, very well acclaimed and is going to set you know, Scotland onto that next journey, that next stage of development. The kind of last the kind of slide here, you know, the last kind of column here is, is the innovation centres. So Scotland has got you know, six um, innovation, seven innovation centres across Scotland, from focusing on digital health, you know, into centres and internet of things, over to data, as well as um, areas like precision medicine and aquaculture. So that you no, know, all that kind of you no, know, we're kind of policy development and that kind of strategy, which has been set both by industry as well as um, kind of government, is also kind of leading into kind of that kind of growth, and um, it's one of the things where um, the technology sector has now become a core. Um, industry for Scotland and it's something which um, we are very much welcome um, engaging with companies internationally who either wish to set up or develop products within Scotland or also you know for Scotland being a location to then access to, to talent and this again just kind of shows the fact that you know one of the things where Scotland has had a uh, has been um, famous on is obviously kind of you know, through the oil and gas and the kind of energy sector, but that's now kind of changing. Um, and as kind of Jim kind of highlighted, that transition over to renewables is now a kind of key aspect for Scotland, and um, linking into that into kind of COP26. So as I say, digital technologies is now an emerging kind of sector related to to Scotland. But now, can I, so that's going to pro provide you a, a bit of a picture of what's happening, I would say, at national level. But um, one of the areas that I say, the area I'm kind of focusing in on now is probably looking at just, again, those innovation districts that are taking place within Scotland. And this kind of picture just kind of shows the, you know, a, a real you know, great insight into the investment that has been taking in or coming into the city. And um, one of the things which is, you no know, is just, you no know, obviously is, it was announced several years ago was that Barclays, um, you know, bank um, are actually you know, investing into you know, right into the heart of, of Glasgow. And that investment is you now looking and is now kind of creating a, a campus on the south side of the River Clyde, which um, goes right through the heart of Scotland, uh, through the heart of Glasgow. And this kind of just shows you an image of that regeneration that's taking place. We're expecting that their new building is going to be you know, opened up um, you know, later this year to kind of align with COP26. And you know, the Glasgow site has now become the you know, Barclays Northern Innovation Hub um, for, for, their, for that organisation. So definitely kind of, we, you know, we can provide you more, more information on that, but you know, it's an absolutely massive investment that's taking place and just shows that regeneration you know, you know, that's happening.
And now I kind of put on again a kind of you know, the kind of topic, you know, just kind of a couple of words there, kind of Clyde mission. And it's one of the things which the government um, is, has, is focusing in on, and that is the regeneration of industry across the kind of Clyde. And that you know, goes obviously from the centre of the, of the city, of the city of Glasgow, right down to, to you know, towards the kind of coast. And there's, there's definitely kind of a lot of um, um, areas you know, that, that's been developed in that particular area. So this just kind of shows you just now some of the kind of I would say kind of some of the the, the kind of the key highlights that of, of Glasgow as as a city, and um, one of the things which um, we're very very proud of as a, a city, but obviously as a, an innovation and a business city, is that you know Glasgow is is actually famous for now making you no know, more you no know, more satellites than any other city except Silicon Valley, and that's again you no. Know, partly down to um, the universities and just the, some of the expertise that is kind of emerging from you know, from, the, from the companies as well. And it's, um, I mean, again, just kind of you know, one of the areas, again, albeit that we're talking about innovation, there's also a cultural element to, to that. And um, <clears throat> the Glasgow School of Art, which is um, internationally recognised as one of the top art schools um, has produced Turner, um, up to six Turner um, Prize winners. Um, and these are all, you no know, have been, you no know, well, you no know, internationally acclaimed and um, across in the world. So it's just going to show you that the fact that there's a, a there's a more to, you know, to meets the eye than, than um, and what's happening is there's a lot of um, investment kind of going on. But I just want to kind of go down into, I mean, I talked about the kind of Clyde mission and the Clyde mission is, say, um, is, is a regeneration program that's been funded by the, the Scottish government, which again is looking at investment in across the kind of city and also down the kind of coast. And these are four areas that, um, four um, aspects that are happening. I covered some of these earlier, but I'm just going to, go to start focusing in on innovation districts. You know, so Glasgow has actually got three innovation districts, the Glasgow City Innovation District, which is the one I, I head up. And um, we've also got the Glasgow Riverside Innovation District, which is um, managed by Glasgow University. <clears throat> and also you've got the Advanced Manufacturing Innovation District in Scotland. The Glasgow Riverside Innovation District is kind of more focused on the kind of medicine and, and health, and also um, is looking at um, nanofabrication. And we'll see the advanced manufacturing is, is focusing on, on, on manufacturing. And within the Glasgow City Innovation District, we're kind of looking at areas of 5G, quantum, health tech, and, you know, and also space. I'll come up onto that in a minute. So as I say, um, Glasgow City Innovation District um, was set up and established you know, several years ago, and is actually the first innovation district in Scotland. Um, and one of the things where, you know, albeit that we talk about innovation kind of business, there is another aspect to that, and that's obviously kind of the, the living aspect and the, 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 what we call the place agenda. And that's um, an area where, you know, you know, where we're trying to kind of create this you know, kind of vibrant um, you know, place for for both um, for people for tourists um, but also for businesses where we're kind of looking at that kind of you know that kind of combination of that kind of live work play and innovate environment. It's centred within the Merchant City, and for any of you who've been to Glasgow before, the Merchant City is the you know is Glasgow's cultural and kind of creative um, hub within the city, and is very much you no know, kind of um, is anchored by um, the University of Strathclyde. So that's the thing that is again you no know, one of the kind of key aspects when when any company is kind of looking is um, the fact that. Um, you know, location is a key a, a key area um, for companies, and within the, the district, um, the, we're very very close to the airports, and also that it's right in the kind of centre of the kind of city. So this innovation community that we're kind of creating um, is anchored by University of Strathclyde, and the, the university has invested up to ninety million pounds in what's called a technology and innovation centre, and that is bringing together quite a you no know, 
a, a kind of vast ecosystem of both um, industry and you know, startups and SME businesses. And aligned to that also, there's also within the district space for businesses to, to, to establish themselves. And that's where, again, you know, like we've got places like the, the Garment Factory and Tontine um, Building, which is a kind of startup kind of um, incubator. So just kind of showing a, a, a few kind of um, kind of brands um, of who are actually kind of in here. You know, we've got the likes of um, Ernst & Young EY, who are the, obviously the kind of international consulting organization, right through to the likes of Rolls-Royce and also kind of um, Pfizer, who are all kind of located within the buildings that you know, surround you know, you know, the university. And also that then kind of creates that um, open um, innovation, you know, kind of collaborative innovation kind of um, network, which is a key aspect to, 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 the, to the growth within the city. And that kind of just I've talked about earlier with regards to just some of the kind of clusters. So the University of Strathclyde has got the within you know, this kind of the tick zone and are focusing in on you know, the kind of 5G, quantum, health tech, fintech, industrial and space. But one of the other um, areas which we're now starting to look at is with COP26 now coming to Glasgow that later this year. Uh, Jim kind of highlighted you know, the climate um, technology and climate is really high up in the agenda. So one of the things which um, we've identified is the, the university and also the kind of tech zone has had three um, no kind of obviously kind of you know, core markets that it's focused and has been built on, and energy is one of those, and that's now going to start to evolve very very quickly quickly into another kind of seventh you no know, kind of cluster which will kind of focusing in on climate tech. So again, linking into this, entrepreneurship is, is at the heart of everything that we do in Scotland and um, within, within the Glasgow City Innovation District and also within the University of Strathclyde. We've been the first university to actually in Scotland to actually launch um, the you know, um, their entrepreneurship strategy and that strategy is, is obviously called and Strathclyde Inspire. And that kind of brings together you know, quite a wide network of people related to investors and um, also contingency partners, also kind of welcoming alumni back, but also then kind of helping and supporting um, you know, the kind of emerging kind of startup companies to kind of create and start new businesses. So, as I say, finally, just want to kind of, um, kind of finish up and um, you know, again, kind of looking at you know, why should companies come to to Scotland and also dare say kind of Glasgow, um, and one of the things which is um, I was in a kind of key aspect is obviously the talent and culture um, that we've got, and and that's something which you no know, Glasgow is very much you no know, renowned for is that having that inclusive culture um, for for people who wish to kind of come to the city, and we're very much you no know, looking at various um, options at the moment to support um, people who are looking to kind of set up. Up. And that's also the kind of the, the visa schemes are now there um, and, and and open for people to be able to kind of um, you know, pick them up and, and include them and, and start that. So um, as I say, if there's anything else, you no, know, you know, any areas you're going to want to kind of hear about, more than happy to can actually speak to you about those. Um, and it's been a pleasure to and we'll obviously be around on the Q and A for for their catch up. Okay, over to yourself, David. Hi there. I thought Alan was going to be next, but that's okay. I'm happy just to go on. I'm David Carrick. I am the Managing Director of SAS R&D Scotland. And what that means is I run an R&D centre in Glasgow. Uh, we have four in SAS, four R&D centres. Uh, North Carolina, Kerry in North Carolina is headquarters as an R&D centre. We have one in Beijing, one in Pune and ourselves here in Glasgow. So previously, uh, before I joined SAS, I was the CEO of a company called Memex, again, based out of uh, East Kilbride in uh, outside, just outside Glasgow. So I was the CEO of Memex. We built law enforcement systems uh, for agencies all around the world, both government agencies and commercial organizations who really wanted to make sense of the data uh, and perform investigations. Uh, I joined them 
going quite a while, quite a far bit back there, 1990. And I joined as a software engineer, so I'm a, I still like to think of myself as a technical person. Uh, in 2000, I got myself in a position where I led a management buyout of the company uh, and took it private. And we had, I think, 25 employees at the time. We raised investment for everywhere we can. And the Scottish Enterprise, uh, to the credit, also invested and provided some loan funding to Memex back in the day. Over the next few years, we built up Memex into a, you know, a good international business. Uh, so by 2010, we had over 110 employees uh, with offices in, in East Cabride, uh, Washington, D.C., and Los Angeles. And half our revenue actually came from the U.S. Uh, by 2010. So like I say, it was an international business. Then SAS came along and, and bought us in 2010. Uh, SAS or what I still think they're the largest private software company in the world. And at SAS, we build a number of uh, products which really give our customers insight into their data through analytics, AI, and machine learning. Uh, so again, they liked what we were doing in, in the law enforcement space, and it was an area that was very interesting and still is very interesting to the company. Uh, people ask me, why did why did SAS buy us? And clearly we had a good customer footprint in the secure, security business. Uh, we had good knowledge of that business through all our people, not just the salespeople, uh, or, you know, from everyone in the company understood the, the marketplace really well. And, you know, it, it all really comes down to really our people uh, and how, you know, the sort of talent that we've brought in at Memex over the years and continue to do in SaaS. I say that because, you know, since that time, I think there's something like seven or eight of folks from Glasgow have moved into senior positions uh, throughout uh, the, you know, company uh, throughout the world, which is fantastic. So, uh, 2004, so 2010, we were bought. We're still based in East Cobride, but then we wanted to move into Glasgow. You, you heard Alistair just there talking uh, a lot about the access to talent, and that was our recruitment strategy. Uh, we predominantly built up our team through hiring from the universities, which uh, you know, again, the guys have already said we've got fantastic universities in Scotland uh, and especially here on the West Coast with both Glasgow, Strathclyde, West of Scotland, Glasgow, Cali, all providing some real top talent. At the time, we had uh, 50 people in r and I now have around 110. Uh, so you can see SAS has clearly invested in, in, our, in our business here. But we've kind of gone away from just working on the one Memex product. And I think this is testament to the sort of people that you can get in Glasgow and in Scotland. We, you know, we now run four strategic product lines for the company, not just the one law enforcement product, but products that are used throughout and sold throughout the world by SAS that are now getting built here in Glasgow. And talking about the universities, I think the last count is just over 50% of all my staff in Glasgow uh, joined as graduates, which is again a uh, testament to the, the good universities and talent we have. Just going to finish off by, by just saying that the, uh, you know, moving into Glasgow has been going right, not, not just because it meant we could get access to the to predominantly young talent coming to the universities who didn't want to travel out you know, to further parts of the country but wanted to get, get into the office quite quickly. Uh, we've also part of, you know, very close to the universities, which we've you know, cultivated relationships with over the year, over the years. And now, as you see, there's this big tech ecosystem that's building up in Scotland and especially on the West Coast here. Uh, West Coast here. Uh, which Al which Alistair you know uh, talked about earlier, and I think that's you know, has its has its advantages because we have a, a lot of staff getting trained by what's the, you know by the universities by the companies in the skills that you need to build a good tech company. Uh, but again, we, you know there's a lot of talent coming through, and we you know we all chase some good talent here in Scotland. So my staff, I think, are predominantly all delighted to be working in the city centre. Uh, they find it 
easy to get to work in the main. There's got great transport links. We've got, we've got great offices uh, in the city centre. And, you know, as we look at track talent, we want to make sure that we have excellent places for people to work. So, yeah. Why should people choose Glasgow over other European cities or other cities in the UK? Like, why... Why not Paris? Why not Rome? Why not Birmingham? Why not London? What does Scotland and say Glasgow, from your perspective, Alistair, have to offer and maybe those cities don't? So so one of the things which is a great benefit, you know, obviously from Glasgow and what it, Glasgow benefits from Scotland is the fact that um, for businesses, you know, the whole of business community is actually connected together. So whereas um, in some other cities, it may just be within the city, the one thing that companies can benefit is not just you know, the, the, obviously the, kind of the talent and access to the support from within a city, but also across you know, the, kind of, the wider kind of business community in other cities. And that is something which um, a lot of businesses have benefited from. So for instance, um, you know, there's a lot of people commute, um, but also are connected together. And it linked into that as well. Um, the one thing which, you know, within Glasgow, um, I mean, everybody kind of is is open and are, are there to support others. And I think that is another aspect, you know, that kind of cultural aspect, you know, which in some cities you might not necessarily get because it's they are very, very vast. I mean, Glasgow still feels like a small city, albeit the fact it's kind of growing. Yeah, thank you. David, I think we're all, so I was going to say, just yeah. add on to that, I think we're all very well connected in Glasgow. And, and I think even Alistair says, hey, you know, I often get asked, you know, can I, can you have a coffee and share some insights uh, with, you know, with maybe a young entrepreneur? And, uh, and whenever I've asked people when it was my turn to do that, you know, people have been always really open and really good with the time. Uh, and I think that's just the very nature of the people that are, that are based in Glasgow. Yeah, obviously, 11 years ago, David, when SAS bought Mimix, you could have perhaps moved to another city or another location. What was it that kept you in the west of Scotland area? What 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 do you, what do you mean, the company? Yeah, the company and you. As a, yeah, the, the company and you. I mean, you. Yeah, what was it that Glasgow yeah, I thought was I don't need, I thought, Well, it's the weather, obviously. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> For me personally, I mean, I've lived in, I mean, I'm not Scottish, right? And, and I come from the northeast of England, but I've lived in Scotland for 31 years. And it's a very similar, you know, type of people uh, in Glasgow, as you find where I went to, went to university in Liverpool or live in the northeast. Uh, very warm folk that live, that, that are based in Glasgow is a general, a very generalization. But, you know, I thought I'd only stay with, with the company for a couple of years, but I think. The company realised quite quickly the talent that we have here is exceptional, and, and I'm not, you know, I'm not just you know embellishing that. That's that's really true. I've, you know, I think I've had seven or eight of people have moved into really good roles within the company as well because we bring in good talent and bring it and, and bring it through. And I, I think we, the, the people we bring in, mature very quickly. I think we have, I think the universities are bringing some really good students through right that you know I, I look and think when i graduated computer science in the dark days uh they, they were you know not not close i mean i'm not close to how talented some of these kids coming through are now right sure. and uh you know Thank, interns you. anything so yeah jim obviously you spend your days uh trying to sell scotland to largely americans are based in the, the british consulate in chicago and obviously, you mentioned in your presentation about the changes in Dundee. The old tire factory has now become an innovation hub, and you've got the changes there. We've seen the VA Museum opening in Dundee, a big change for that city. How, what's the kind of, what, what reaction do you get from Americans and other investors when you mention why don't you consider Scotland? Companies in uh, the US will generally say, when we first start the discussion, they will generally say, well, we're familiar with London or we're familiar with Dublin just because they've been there on vacation. They most likely have been to Scotland on vacation as well, but you know, those two locations really kind of uh, are the 
first thoughts that come to mind. But when you start to talk with companies about, you know, the benefits that Scotland can offer in terms of quality of life, in terms of, you know, being able to attract highly skilled talent. And to be honest with you, the talent that works in Scotland likes to stay in Scotland that are not interested in traveling, you know, down to London or traveling elsewhere, you know, so I, companies that I speak with who have invested in Scotland will generally come back to me and say, you know what, we're really amazed at the, you know, kind of longevity that our personnel here in Scotland have because elsewhere we're fighting for talent against you know, other companies and the team in Scotland is not only world class, but they like they like where they live. And so sure. we really try yeah. to promote that. Thanks, Jim. Alistair, obviously, from your experience of growing a, a tech firm in Scotland, what's the environment like in terms of trying to track investment? Because obviously that's one of the key things that business yeah. will consider as a location. What's the venture capitalist environment like? How can they find funds to grow their company? So the within Scotland, um, we've got a very very strong kind of angel community, and um, I mean that angel community is you know there's an organisation called Link Scotland who kind of represent kind of those angel investors, and I mean the angel kind of uh, the angel community community is kind of I mean it, it continually evolves, um, and what we're starting to see is where you know there's been several. Um, large tech companies who have either moved or shifted into um, and onto the kind of stock market, or other ones that have been acquired. So, for instance, um, the founders of um, Skyscanner, which obviously um, you know was acquired by kind of C Trip. There's actually there's in the, in the recent no obviously the last ten years there's been quite a lot of release of equity back to the founders of companies. So what we're now starting to see is we're now starting to see many of those kind of original founders of businesses starting to invest in the early stage you know kind of um, startup community. But the the other thing that's been happening is that some of those you no know, angel um, kind of um, groups have actually now moved into VCs and become VCs. So organisations like Scottish Equity Partners and the likes of um, you no know, kind of like Tech Start, no Tech Start, but um, Par Equity are now you no know, have been you no know, securing you no know, you no know, international funds to move themselves up, and that. As well is that, albeit we we kind of focus in on obviously that investment community in Scotland, but the investment community is now kind of global. So again, one of the things which um, that's been quite interesting is like, or you no know, American VCs are actually been investing into Scottish companies. So again, like um, Skyscanner, you no know, Sequoia had been a, a a key investor. So where is you no know, so. When companies come to Scotland or can look to kind of grow, the thing to remember is that the you know, Scotland's community, tech community is actually connected internationally. So it's not as if you're going to a different location. It's Thanks. the fact that we're actually all connected. Okay. <laughs> Thanks so much, Alistair. I guess we all uh, live in Scotland. Uh, Jim obviously lives in America but sells Scotland, but the three of us on the call all live here and we love the country we live in. People choose allocation because of the investment, because of the work, but they also choose it for the quality of life. I mean, Scotland is a small country. I can get to the island of Arran in an hour, and Arran is a beautiful island. It's Scotland in miniature. I can get to Loch Lomond in half an hour. There's great culture available. I know, David, you're a big fan of music. You've got great venues in Glasgow <laughs> that hopefully will be open again course, soon. Yep. will be the story of the band Oasis that people on the call have heard of. They were, they were discovered in King Tut's, a small venue in Glasgow. It's a film coming out. Soon, with uh, Ewan McGregor playing the role of Alan McGee from Creative Records, who discovered Oasis. So Scotland has a proud history of culture. But maybe, David, could you, obviously you and I have, have different, uh, follow different colours in, in football, but we wouldn't touch on that just now, maybe that's a bit difficult for you to cover that topic. But could you talk, touch on another quality of life issue as why you love <laughs> music? I, I think you've, you've, you've covered them off, right? You know, we can... That we've got. I mean, I don't play golf, but I love. I love going away for weekends to some of the beautiful uh, golf course hotels that we have in Scotland, right? You know, whether yeah. it's Turnbury, Glen Eagle, St Andrews. We've just got 
everything and it's it, you're right it's not more than an hour away right you know like i say 40 minutes to Loch lomond yeah you're out you're out and you know you you're out in the mountains i mean a lot of the a lot of the folk here in that work for me it says a lot of them love going for you know mountain climbing hill walking you see them on instagram every week you know they work hard during the week and then they're off out up a mountain right Sure. We've got it. We've got. We've got everything. Yeah, Alistair. I mean, I'll put you two in your downtime, and why do you think Scotland or Glasgow is a good place to be? Well, it's interesting because I'm, I'm a mad skier, and um, one of the things which um, earlier in my career I actually worked for um, the American company Hewlett Packard, yeah. and um, oh. which took me to 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 the you know the US many times, both in the valley and also up in the um, the northwest. Um, and the one thing which, um, again, it's quite interesting that, you know, those connections, you know, to the US are still here and are still kind of, you know, are very, very, very vibrant. And that, but from a from personal perspective, again, no, you know, I'm, I'm a skier. We do get skiing in Scotland. This has been the best year, but we've not been able to get up to the hills. <laughs> um, but the other thing that's, um, that's, that's also, you know, People, I mean, it's only a, it's only about an hour, an hour and a half to to Europe, right? And being okay, I mean, Europe's still there. I mean, we still get in. Yeah. So the thing is that no, yeah. those connections are still you no, know, you no, know, and and again, you've got the whole of the certainly as a skier, you've got the whole of the Alps and, and France. And I know that um, for for lots of um, my colleagues and friends from the US, you know, that's again going to get stopping place for for everybody as well. Sure, uh, Jim, you mentioned Dundee. Mm. It's not far from there you've got Arbiki which is a, a, a distillery that, that has won awards for its uh, gin product just on a climate change uh, model there they've got a, they've got a, clim a climate zero gin that's distilled from peas so I'm not sure if you've tried any of the Arbiki gin yet Jim but you obviously you're, you've been back home to Scotland what's your impression of the country when you get to go? You know, uh, I have to echo what has been shared in terms of, you know, as an American traveling over to Scotland, everything is very close, very connected. Um, you know, in the U.S., if you're in the U.S. Midwest, you're so far from, you know, other locations for you to travel to, say, uh, St. Louis or uh, Kansas City. Yeah, that's a day trip, you know, I mean, in terms of whereas in you know, 45 minutes between Edinburgh and Glasgow, you know, another 45 minutes from Edinburgh to St. Andrews or, you know, so in terms of the access to the major locations in uh, Scotland, which are kind of focused on business, you can't beat it in terms of connectivity. Yep. I think that probably, uh, that's us covered all the, the bases that Scotland has to offer. There's plenty more to talk about, obviously, uh, the home of golf. Uh, we're speaking to people in Chicago. They, they, it wasn't that, that, that long ago we had a miracle in Medina, but that's probably that's probably quite hard to, to remind the, uh, the the Chicago audience of the outcome of the Ryder Cup. And it, 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 we hosted the Ryder Cup recently at Glen Eagles and the Solheim Cup, the ladies' version. But there's more to Scotland than the home of golf. But hopefully the, the, this afternoon's session has given you a chance to learn about the economic uh, environment in Scotland and to provide you with a, a flavour. But if you have any Follow questions to get in touch with myself, David, Alistair, or Jim. Yeah, definitely. Thanks so much, guys. Yeah, I think we'll hand over to the next session. Thanks to everyone for taking part today. Cheers, Thanks, Sam. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thank you. Cheers.